Hey guys, it's Mike. You know, I have tried multiple times in front of this camera to put together a video that uh, is about my thoughts on this whole COVID-19 thing. And I keep recording over and over again and then stopping and just thinking, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can say these things. But today I just want to be honest with you. And quite frankly, it'll probably end up biting me in the butt. Maybe people get offended. Maybe people unsubscribe. Uh, I'm sure that I'll be misunderstood, but I, I just, I want to share my heart with you on this situation, not to get it off my chest, uh, but more in the hopes that it maybe gives you some perspective that you, that you're struggling to, to gain, or that maybe you have, but just want some reinforcement or maybe perspective that you just don't have and could really benefit from. So I'm just going to be honest with you. This might be a little bit of a long video. It's not going to be that structured. I'm going to be honest with you, and uh, hopefully this is useful in one way or another, because ultimately what I want, what I want for you, for all of my kind of viewers, all my subscribers, the people that kind of have become this coalesced community ar around this channel, I want you to do well. I want you to thrive. I want you to be able to enjoy not only life, but enjoy being alive, being a human being, being creative, producing, and enjoying the fruits of that production. So I'm hoping that by sharing my heart with you, that it's useful in some way to some of you. And, uh, you know, I always end these videos by saying, hey, I love you guys. I'll, I'll end this one the same way. I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. You know, and I understand, like, that's, that's kind of, it sounds like a throwaway term, like, I love you guys. I really do care about my audience. I just think that you people are wonderful. And we've had some interaction in the live streams. We've had interactions in the comments. And um, I care about you. I want you to do well. I want you to thrive in life. And so I feel like in this kind of situation that we're in, I just feel compelled to talk a little bit. And uh, I'm just going to be honest. And if that's offensive, I understand. And you don't have to watch this. You can leave me a nasty comment down below if you feel that makes you feel better. But hopefully these thoughts maybe encourage you in some ways or reframe the situation, uh, maybe even just a little bit. So at the root, uh, kind of at the core of all this for me, I feel very frustrated. I feel I'm angry. I'm angry about this. And I'm not, I'm not angry that there is a virus. I'm not angry that there's a pandemic. I'm not angry that, you know, we're all having to work from home. Look, as a consultant, I've been working home, from home for years uh, so the, I'm kind of telling people like, welcome to my world. And there's some fantastic things about working from home and there's some challenges too. You know, I, I'm not angry that, um, you know, that people are a little worried about this. I, I, I get all that. This is a real thing. I'm not assuming this is a conspiracy. I'm not, you know, I'm not just going down. I'm not angry because of that, but I am angry with a group of people. I, I have to admit, I just feel very angry with a group of people. Now, here's the thing. I think there's some opportunities for us, all of us, and I want to share a couple of those. They're both related, but I want to share some opportunities I think that this um, virus presents for us. But before we get there, I just want to talk a little bit about you know, who I'm angry with, why I'm angry with them, and how I think they're hurting us. And this isn't supposed to be a political piece, uh, but, but I, I just have to put this on the table. And uh, this has nothing to do with right or left. I'm very frustrated with the media right now, very frustrated. Here's the thing, our governments all over the world are telling us as individuals, as citizens, as people, here's your responsibility. Here's what you can do to help. You know, stay inside, practice social distancing, practice better hygiene habits, don't go anywhere you don't need to go, no unnecessary travel, don't get together in large groups, and, and that's reasonable. I'm not upset, I'm not upset that, you know, that sporting events are being canceled. I'm not upset. You know, like I have some speaking engagements, paid engagements at conferences. Those are being canceled or, or put out indefinitely. Like I'm not upset. I get it. Like that's our responsibility. Our responsibility is to try to help slow the spread of this virus so the existing health um, infrastructures can handle the crisis and give people that really need the aid aid. If we don't slow the spread, if we don't flatten the curve, as they like to say, it's possible that our systems get overwhelmed. I get it. Now, that's not factoring in human ingenuity and mobilizing manufacturing uh, to create things like ventilators, et cetera. I mean, I, and I, I'm a great believer. You know, uh, our boy Elon Musk came out recently and said, hey, I could swap the Tesla factory over to, uh, to uh, create ventilators. We could do it. We've got the technology, so let me know. I'm ready. So I think there's a lot of 
ingenuity and can do spirit. And I think a lot of human beings coming together saying we can beat this thing. So I'm not, I'm not angry about that. I'm not even angry that, um, although I'm really troubled by this, I'm not angry and frustrated that, that this is gonna be a huge economic hit. I get it, it just is what it is. And it's not gonna be pretty. I, I think the economic toll is actually gonna be way worse than the, than the death toll. I, look, people are dying already. More people are gonna die. This is not good. And people die all the time. Car uh, accidents and, the, and just influenza. I mean, death happens a lot. It's part of the human experience, unfortunately. And, and I think anyone that dies, any death is a bad death. I don't think that's a good thing. But I think in the long run, the economic impact, the misery, the unemployment, the impoverishment, this sets the whole globe behind in a way. And I'm not talking about now we can't afford our smartphones. I'm talking about this is going to have an impact in real ways in people's lives. So that's frustrating. But the, the people that I'm really frustrated with, the people that I'm angry with here, it's the media. You know, we're being told what our responsibility is. And I got to tell you, I think most people are taking that responsibility seriously. They're saying, yeah, look, I get it. Now, I know there's some kids partying for spring break on the beaches. There's some idiots. There are definitely idiots out there. I get it. They're just trying to prove how, you know, uh, how stupid they are. And they're doing a good job. But I even think the governments of the world are doing their best. I look, you know, there's so much rancor and anger and hatred around the Donald Trump presidency. I think the guy's doing a phenomenal job. You can criticize how quickly his administration responded or how unprepared they were, et cetera. I think they found their stride and I think they're doing a good job. And I look at some of these other countries and not all, you know, right-wing countries, not right-wing governments. I think left-wing and right-wing are working together on a governmental level, you know, statewide, local, municipal, federal uh, governments. They're all working together saying, how do we get this dealt with? How do we get it dealt with? And I appreciate that. I think they're all doing a relatively decent job. And I know some countries have been hit hard, like Italy and other countries, South Korea have done a really good job. You know, so there's, there's, you can definitely look back later and say who did it right and who didn't do it right, but I, I'm not even upset with the governments. They're doing the best they can with what they've got to deal with. And, uh, but I feel like the media is being irresponsible. They're being irresponsible and here's why. Every human being can't help themselves but focus on negative stimuli. It's the way we're wired. You drive down the street, and on the other side of the highway, there's an accident. Not, it doesn't impede you. There's nobody on your side. You can't help but slow down and take a look. You just We call it in America rubbernecking. You kind of do this. You look as you go by, and you create a traffic jam because everybody's slowing down. And the people half a mile, but they don't know what's going on. And they're like, what's going on? Why are we at a standstill? It's because we're all fascinated by someone else's pain by negative stimuli, by accidents and, and those kinds of things. Part of it is a survival mechanism. You know, human beings are wired to fixate on the negative so that they can learn to avoid negative situations. You know, if you put your hand uh, on a hot stove, an oven, and you burn your hand and you don't really kind of remember that or fixate on it, then you're just going to keep putting your hand there until eventually someday over the years of keep burning yourself, your hand is useless. You know, you lose, like it's not useless, it's not useful to you because you've ruined it. And we have to focus on negative stimuli. That's just part of how we grow and learn and, and, and adapt so that we can survive for the next day and the next day and the next day. But the media is kind of capitalizing. Like you look at the Wall Street Journal, you know, not accused of being a sensationalist uh, news organ, but even they're stooping to the, you know, their lead images. I mean, look at these things. You've got images of, you know, coffins being loaded into vans. You've got images of gangs of people in hazmat suits rolling some poor victim in a hazmat suit down some gangplank or alleyway or something. I don't know, but like that's their lead image. Now, maybe all the reporting style, but like the lead images are sensational and they're terrifying. And they're just around the clock pumping out these stories. The way that they ask the questions of politicians and government officials in charge of health care and uh, drug approval, et cetera, it's like every question starts with, the American people are terrified. What can you tell them to make them feel better? The American people are scared. Can you tell them with, assur with assurance that you're going to make it better? The American people are scared. They're scared. They're scared. The fact of the matter is, I don't know that we're that scared. Yes, it is scary. But I think that, that the American people, the Italian people, the Chinese people, the Irish people, the Indian people, the Iranian people, all the people of the world, I think that we have greatness within us. I don't think that we're just these weak 
huddled masses, just pathetic and terrified and shivering, incapable of rising to the occasion. It's the average man and woman that have made the world work for millennia. It is us that have raised up uh, the heroes that fight wars and that combat evil and that overcome uh, natural disasters. It's the neighborly people. It's the people that are willing to say, I'll put my life. It's the line workers. It's not the high level people. And, the, and for the media to just be framing this as a fear thing and to be putting imagery out there nonstop of the horror and the terror and the potential disaster that this might end up being, I think is irresponsible. It's very frustrating to me. It's counterproductive. And I think there needs to be a discussion, not because I'm a right-wing guy, conservative, or because I'm a liberal guy, and, I, you know, and I've got an ax to grind with one news media source or another. It's not because of the whole fake news narrative, but I do think, I feel like the news media and the entertainment industry, um, they've been insincere through this, and I think that they're being irresponsible. This is a time to come together and to help each other. Why can't they focus on information that helps us? Why can't they give us information that, that applies to our daily life and such as this nonstop fear-mongering? Now, I know, Mike, you're overreacting. They've got to do this stuff. They've got to tell this and that. I get it. And uh, I'm not a journalist. I'm not a news professional. So I'm just a person. Uh, but I don't like it. I'm quite frustrated by it. Now, let's talk about the opportunity. I've gone on pretty long here. What are the opportunities? Here's the thing. If you and I can wrest our attention away from the things that cause fear. There's an opportunity for us to grow. Every generation that is faced with a hardship rises to that hardship and becomes greater for it. You know, Joseph Campbell, the uh, thinker, academic that identified the hero's journey in his book, his classic book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, talks about kind of the hero before they become the hero. They're just this person minding their own business. They're living a comfortable life they're enjoying it. They have pleasure and happiness and, and peace. And then there is the call to adventure. This thing comes up and kind of upsets the apple cart. It's an event. It's a situation that says, hey, hero, would you go on an adventure? Will you face this thing? And often the hero doesn't want to. They're like, look, I, I'm comfortable. They might reject initially the call to adventure. But once the hero accepts the call to adventure, they accept the responsibility of facing this challenge, this task, this journey uh, head on. They go through a lot of hardships, but they come out the other side transformed. You can't transform, you can't grow, you can't become more significant, deeper, broader, uh, and, and, and have more agency, more potency without going through hardship, without going through challenges, without going through deprivation and, uh, and frustration and even, and even antagonization, you know, without being challenged or fought against. I mean, the best thing for you if you want to grow is to go through some kind of hardship. This is why when you go to the gym to work out, it's hard. You're actually creating hardship. It's, art of, it's manufactured hardship for your muscles. You're, you're either pushing your lungs really hard on a bicycle or you're, you're lifting weights, you're causing hardship. And when you do that, your body responds over time. It becomes bigger, stronger, more fit, more capable. It's analogous. It's the same thing. It's like when we endure hardship as people, as individuals, as communities, as societies, as nations, we become stronger for it. We have the opportunity to become stronger. Now, it depends how we react and respond. And I think that's why I'm so frustrated with the media. We have an opportunity before all of us to, to address this in a way that's, that kind of brings out, that, that amplifies the greater aspects of our human nature, the, the, the greatness, the generosity, the, the heroic kind of elements that, that live within each and every one of us. And... Uh, when you're focused on fear, when you're fearful, you have this instinct to kind of withdraw, to, 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 to become uh, self-centered and to protect your own life above others, to, to make sure that you grab all the toilet paper before your neighbor gets the toilet paper. It's just, it's just ridiculous. And it reduces all of us to kind of just our, our, uh, our kind of basis level. Uh, and there's no nobility in that. There's no greatness in that. And so... I think the first opportunity for us is to grow as individuals and as, as neighbors, communities, 
by being more heroic, being willing to put our life out there on behalf of others. Jesus said, you know, no greater love does a man have than he lays it down for his brother. He also said, love your neighbor as yourself. And whether you're a Christian or not, whether you believe in spiritual or not, it's immaterial. I mean, I would love for you to to embrace Christ's teachings. But the fact is, you know, like, like if you're willing to lay your life down for others, that's heroic. I'm not asking you to go get sick on purpose, but like, look at your neighbors. What do they need? How can you help? Are there ways that you can serve the people around you uh, that, that just show some care in the better aspects of our nature? So that's the first thing. And the second thing, and I don't really know what this looks like in the future, but the fact of the matter is whenever there's chaos, whenever there's change, whenever there's uh, a rumbling and a, an unsettling of the fundamentals of the way that a society or a community or even the globe works, it creates business opportunities. Now, the thing is, we're all in a tough place financially. This is not going to be an easy one. This is going to be a long haul, and it's going to have long-lasting effects. I don't care how much money each government is willing to throw into their economy and to help disaffected people. At the end of the day, this is going to be a tough one to overcome, but we're going to overcome it. We're going to do it. Uh, but I think in the midst of all that, in all that change and all that disruption, it does create opportunities. Now, maybe you're sitting there saying, I kind of wish I was in my own business. I've been thinking about doing it. Now I can't. I would encourage you, hold that thought. Keep an eye out. Don't focus on the fear. Don't focus on the nonstop news stream about COVID-19. Start looking at the world around you. Look at the dynamics. Look at the things that are happening. Start observing the fundamentals because I think that there are going to be opportunities. I don't mean opportunities to cash in on a crisis. I'm not saying that you should just uh, set up some type of distribution uh, center for uh, ventilators and just do rent seeking, try to cash in, jack up the prices, try to grab a stranglehold on the market so you can control it. That's just, that's just disgusting. That's again, the base, base uh, elements of human nature. But I think through all this, there are opportunities. There's going to be a lot of opportunities. If you've been wanting to go into business for yourself, I, I, I wouldn't be discouraged. I think there's opportunity out there right now. And I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity when we come through this you know, in a few months. And I would encourage you, if that's in your heart, to you know, take your eyes off the media and start looking at the world around you. Start thinking a little bit just, and give it some time. I think the opportunities will start to materialize. But if you're distracted, if you're fixated on those things that are terrifying, that are fear-causing, you're going to miss out. And you're going to look back and kick yourself and say, man, what was I doing? I, I'm fine. I came through this the other side. I'm fine. The people I love are relatively fine. Everybody came through okay. Uh, and now I missed the opportunity and I wish I was paying attention. Now is the time to pay attention. So guys, that's a long, almost 20-minute video. And uh, I... I you know, I apologize for rambling a little bit, but I just want to get this off my chest because ultimately I want you to do well, like I said at the beginning of this video, and I think that there's opportunity here, but I think the opportunity only presents itself if we're looking for it. And we can only look in one, at one thing at a time, and if you're fixated and focused, and I'm fixated and focused on all the negativity, all the scaremongering, then I think we miss out, and uh, I think we're greater than that. So guys, I love you all, and I'll catch you in the next video.